grazie professore Gentile. Eh, scusate a tutti se io parlerò in inglese, ma dopo la presentazione va bene se fare le domande in inglese o anche in italiano. Eh, quindi, ok. So, this is a small piece of work that talks about the uh, significance of varying CPOD estimation procedure for common factor specimens. Uh, actually, I changed a little bit the title. I'll just revisit the uh, single edge, not stencil uh, configuration. Okay. Uh, first, the outline. There has been an increased use of uh, what we call single edge and uh, notch tensile factor specimens in uh, ECA procedures. I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with uh, ECA procedures. They are called engineering uh, critical assessment procedures. In the US, they call fitness for service procedures. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the recent uh, standard. It's still right here. Uh, standardization force to develop these uh, procedures because these, these specimens are not standardized like in, uh, in ASTM 1820. Uh, some J estimation is, is, issues in tough, toughness testing uh, for this uh, specimen. And also the uh, significance of the ETA factor in J estimation and also CTOB estimation. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about what we call a constraint effect in ECE procedures. Usually in a type line, this is the uh, uh, schematic of the J, Q, curve. Uh, Q is the second uh, parameter in the JQ methodology to measure the level of corrective constraint. So the larger the negative Q, uh, Q the lower the constraint. And so we have a comparison here. Uh, the pipeline here is an axial flaw. has a very low constraint uh, uh, condition as, as measured by the J versus uh, minus Q. On the other hand, in common EC procedures, we commonly use either the, the compact tensile uh, specimen or even the deep knot SCB specimen. And you can see here the, a very large difference between uh, the constraint level between a, a CT specimen and a, uh, a pipeline. So this will uh, indicate a very uh, conservative assessment when doing, on using uh, the CT. Uh, so, about five, six years ago, perhaps ten years ago, uh, we started the idea of using what we call mechanically similar specimens. They, so, the idea is to use an, a, a crack configuration, a specimen, where we have the same crack tip conditions as our pipeline, for example. And just to give an idea, it's an animation that we did uh, a couple of years ago. This is a, a pipeline, and this is a SEB specimen. So, you can see here, the development of the plastic zone here in the pipe and in the SAB. This will show you that a, a spread, uh, spread the plastic zone and a much more confined plastic zone for the SAB, which shows this is a high constraint, much more conservative specimen. Uh, next is the SET, a pin loaded, this is called a pin loaded specimen here. You can see here, the same axial loading, by the way, this is the same loading, the same J level, CTLD or, or J. You can see here, that the pipe and the SCT, they have <coughs> nearly the same uh, development of the, of the process zone or the plastic shape as, as you would. Okay, uh, here a better picture here, just to show you the 20 inch pipe A over T.5, SCT A over that 0.5. The same uh, normalized uh, plastic region. Uh, one of the key applications for these SCT specimens is, is in riser installation by reeling. So these are uh, in deep water. This is a, a floating production uh, offloading unit here. So the idea here is the, uh, uh, to optimize this installation. So a lot of riser are, are laid down in the own single FPSO. So uh, the system riser is, is uh, very large. Very many, many pipelines, submarine pipelines and risers. So to uh, speed up the installation, usually the, um, these risers are welded on shore. They're welded on shore. They are reeled in a, in a very large drum. So this is a, a, a a steel pipeline, uh, perhaps a 12 inch, uh, a 14 inch pipeline, it's real and it's deployed into the sea. The thing is, is uh, since this introduces a large plastic strain on the, on the girth well, we do need to develop flow, uh, some guidelines for flow acceptance when doing the pipeline installation. Just to give an idea, this is a picture that I took from the from CTF guys here, this is a full scale testing of the pipe. This, Perhaps this is a 10 inch or 12 inch pipeline still here. Uh, and here is the testing, uh, full scale testing, the practice here. 
By the way, these are by axial loading. You can see here the, uh, the moment of the crack. So the, uh, it's in, uh, uh, internal pressure. You can see the moment of the, of the crack. So there are some issues with the uh, toughness measure measurements with the CET specimen. So the, uh, the current procedure, for example, 18, ISM 1820, do not cover SET specimens. The DNV, the Death Nurse Ventus uh, procedure, F108, they provide only very limited guidelines for testing this kind of specimen. We developed an extensive body of results uh, a couple of years ago covering this, uh, this specimen, but uh, there is still some issues uh, going on here. So I will present you very briefly uh, three common J estimation or CTOD, if you will, procedures. Classical work, it's uh, uh, ASTM 820 is based on uh, load separation and mode specimen technique. So all of these trees are based on the macroscopic measurement of load and displacement. can be either load line displacement, LOD, or what's more, more common, uh, CMOD, front mouth opening displacement. So the, the emphasis has been always on the uh, testing deeply uh, conventional specimens, CT and uh, SEV. The, the E factor is based on the plastic work. So J is actually, the J integral, is actually uh, the strain, the corrective strain energy. So we actually don't measure the corrective strain energy. The way we do this is by just doing a J integral analysis, uh, we come up with a relationship between class J and a class area under the load versus a displacement curve. So this eta factor is actually the class contribution to the strain energy. Another procedure which uh, was introduced by Professor Lenz at Tennessee University a couple of years ago, or maybe 20 years ago, was the load separation analysis where load may be expressed as a separate form in terms of displacement function, H, and the crack function, G, uh, in, uh, in this term. So just a, a two independent terms, they are decoupled. In this sense, the E factor is actually the derivative of, of, of the, uh, the G function, provided that you, you do uh, choose a, a convenient uh, crack function for, for, for the uh, um, uh, uh, for the G function. And another procedure is the mode specimen uh, procedure. It's probably the first uh, procedure to measure J that was published by, actually, was published by Professor uh, Lenz at Tennessee, maybe back in the 70s, 72, uh, 1972, 1975. was based on the measurement of potential energy. Remember that J is, is actually practical uh, plastic energy for several specimens, but with similar geometry and different crack size. So the idea is to measure, uh, seven, is to have several specimens, then you measure P, or load, versus displacement for that several crack lengths. By um, calculating the area, you are actually calculating the class score. So you can then uh, build a, a graphic plot where the, the potential energy versus A. So the derivative will be just J. So that's the energy release interpretation J. So that's the, uh, the idea. Then we'll have uh, several uh, curves with J versus uh, uh, load line displacement for several crack size. So that's the, uh, the whole picture here. OK? OK. Uh, so all these previous procedures, they derive from a J integral analysis based on the plus contribution to the strain energy. Uh, one of the problems here is that the potential energy of the cracked body may include plastic deformation. This is a problem. May include plastic deformation, which is remote from the crack tip. So if it's remote from the crack tip, actually it's like, like it may be uh, masking the contribution to J. So the question here that was pursued in this work is, does the ETA factor provide a robust characterization of crack driving force? and toughness, because that's what we measure in the laboratory. Then we did a simple analysis, very plain spray analysis, several uh, 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 configurations. This is a pin load, and this is a, a clamp. Uh, a, H over W equals to 6, which is very standard. And the crack size over the specimen width was varied between 1, uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.7, uh, shallow notch to deep notch, and in parameter 0.05. And we just 
I am showing here just a, 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 some results for n equals to 10 tubes, more like, like a pressure vessel tube. Uh, all these plain strain analysis. This is a typical mesh, uh, large strain analysis, plastic deformation of omises, and etc. etc. Um, uh, first, we uh, used a very simple scheme to evaluate J, uh, a, sorry, ICTA, uh, E of factor which is uh, just a, a least square estimation of J versus the plastic area, so we we'll get rid of all those potential errors. And that's what we, what we have for, for example, the pin load. You can see here that the uh, uh, evaluation of the, uh, the, 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 the ETA for based on load value displacement versus A over W for the pin loads. This is uh, for the clamp specimen here. This is the clamp specimen here. So. Uh, almost no variation for the, for, for the deep notch, but it's a, a large variation for the shallow notch. Uh, then we did the same for the load separation analysis. Remember, the load separation analysis is based on the uh, derivative of the J function, uh, or sorry, the G function. Uh, since we don't know the G function, a uh, lens, of, uh, sorry, a uh, lens in 1990 is not certain if it was 94 or 96, anyway. One of those two papers, and they came up with a very clever solution where they uh, introduced a simplified procedure but based on the load ratio. Uh, so in order, so in, instead of the, taking the first derivative of G, they took the first derivative of the load ratio. Okay. Uh, so this is a, then are the load displacement curves, P versus uh, LOD. We took the uh, A over W25 as the reference, as the reference geometry for the pin load. Then we have the variation of the, um, the, the load separation parameter versus uh, class LOD. You can see here there is a, a transient uh, 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 a region here, but they are pretty much uh, constant and then depend on the A over W here. Um, and then what we did was to build the, the functional, a functional relationship between um, uh, the load separation versus uh, A over W here, B over W, B is the crack ligament. And here we have the finite element data, a power law which was first introduced by Professor Lenz at the University of Tennessee. There are many of papers published on the power law, and a third order polynomial and a fifth order polynomial. And here what we get by using a, a, a fifth polynomial on the third polynomial, we, 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 got, we get very close uh, values. Uh, uh, we, we get uh, either values very close to the class work. So they are pretty much in agreement. But see what happens when you use, you use the power law fitting. The power law fitting provides a constant value. It doesn't, it doesn't depend on the A over W ratio. The same for, I'll go very quickly with this, I'm running out of time. So this is the same for the uh, um, plant specimens, P versus uh, LD, and the load ratio, the load, uh, this, uh, the load ratio versus plastic uh, um, uh, LD. A over that point five is the reference geometry, and again, uh, the fitting, uh, power law, third polynomial, and fifth polynomial, and again, and again, what you see, a very close agreement between the load separation analysis using a, a, a fifth polynomial and a, four, a third polynomial with the plus work. And again, the polynomial, the power law, provides a constant value. Okay? So very different, particularly in the shallow uh, notch range. So the previous analysis appeared to uh, support uh, the current ETA factors based on the plus work for modern to deep cracks. However, the ETA factors derived from class work in load separation are similar, provide the appropriate fu uh, fitting functions adopted. The uh, robustness of the J estimation procedure for the shallow crack is still an open issue. So what we did then was to um, and compare the mode specimen J, was proposed initially by also uh, Professor Lenz at Tennessee, versus the Domain integral J. This is the, the J that we calculated using the finite element method. Most of the finite element math method out there, they calculate J by using a domain integral, integral procedure. So this is the pin loaded specimen. Look at what we have here. The domain procedure and the mode specimen procedure are pretty much the same for the deep, uh, 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 deep notch crack. 
So we start losing agreement for a over that point three, a over that point two, and then the agreement is very is, is, is actually very bad for a over that point one. You can see here the domain uh, the uh, domain procedure and the mode specimen procedure. And the same for the clamp specimen. Uh, very good agreement for the sh for the deep notch crack. Uh, also decent agreement for the a over that point three. A over that point two, and again uh, a very uh, bad agreement for the shallow um, uh, notch crack, uh, notch specimen. So the explanation for this is, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, plastic work this is must not capture plasticity outside the crack tip. Uh, that's exactly what's happening for the shallow crack. The plastic work defined by the area under the load specimen curve is actually being affected by remote plasticity. So what, what, exactly what we have for the shallow crack configuration is an apparent fracture toughness. Uh, that's the explanation here. It's a, it's a cracked body, general cracked body. You, you, you apply a load here, and, and the P versus delta, delta which is a macroscope, this is what the guys in the lab are, are measuring. I probably think I'm measuring the plastic work, but actually, you are introducing plasticity here, well uh, outside the crack tip region. This is uh, most likely affecting your results. Okay, and then it's uh, my conclusion here. Um, the EDA factor based on the uh, class work provide a, a robust J and consequently CT of the estimations because they are essentially the same. Derived from testing protocols using low displacement data uh, for moderate to deep crack SCT specimens. The EDA factor derived from, derived from the load separation analysis depend on the fitting function. And this is very dangerous. There are many papers published by Professor Lenz and co-workers co co um, about 20 years ago where they do provide some EDA factors based on load separation analysis, particularly for very shallow or, or very deep cracks also. And uh, consequently, the robustness of the J estimation procedure for the shallow crack. So the shallow crack is always uh, a big issue. Uh, need further assessment. So it's. Uh, it's